Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time, I hope you'll like and subscribe after you're watching this video. We're going to do today um, a series of four smaller paintings using a gesso technique and then applying oils over that. So uh, it'll take place over a period of a couple of hours. And I'll kind of splice these together at the end because we'll pause at some one point and let the gesso dry. I could use a heat gun to do that, but uh, I got plenty of time, so I don't really feel like doing that. All right, so let's start off with what we have here. We have an 8x10 canvas. It has got three coats of black gesso on it. And I have four of those. There's two more, that one, and another one sitting over here that's wet still. So we're going to let it sit over there and dry. And meanwhile, we're going to go to work on other three. The gesso I'm using is uh, I made myself um, the white gesso. You can watch the gesso videos to figure out how to make this stuff. It's, it's really easy to do. I'm just going to pour a little bit of this on a plate and we'll start with that and then we'll kind of move up to using some of the black gesso and then well some of the gray gesso we'll make some gray gesso out of the black because i also have this black gesso here as well so so we'll put the uh do the things we want to do with the white gesso and then uh, we'll come back and we'll do the gray gesso um i'll probably just do that on each one as i go so we'll, we'll try it out all right so we're going to make uh, some forest scenes um, so we'll have the black gesso base, we'll, we'll, apply, we'll apply some of the, the background forest scene, and then we'll, we'll paint some trees and stuff in here with the gray gesso, maybe a little bit of black gesso, and then we will come back and put the oils over the top of that. So let's, let's get started. So I just have a paper towel. I'm just going to kind of crinkle it up here. You can use a sponge for this if you want. All right. Let's just kind of start, let's see, let's just start this one in the middle. This part here is, I want it to be mostly, mostly white, because that'll be the center of the painting. Let's move a little bit below that though. Kind of make the forest come in here a little bit more like that. So this will be the, you know, this will be the main highlighted area. I'm just picking up some of the gesso off of this, taking the excess off of here, up here. That way it'll dry relatively fast. Use a little bit of it down here to shadow this up a little bit. Now be careful not to. You want to be sure you dab and don't don't drag it. Around. All right. Well, it don't look look much like a forest yet, but I hope already you can start to see. So you see where I uh, like maybe that's gonna kind of be that's forest before we keep going too far. All right, for now, let's just set that aside. Let's pick up another one. All right, I think this one here I'm going to put a little bit to the left. And then as we come this way, we'll just kind of let that gesso fade out. See the landscape that's forming up here in my mind a little bit. Maybe even like a 
a little bit of a lake or something on this side, maybe. Maybe. Never can tell when I get to the oils what what I was liable to happen there. Alright, let's pick up a little bit more of the white gesso. Put it in here. Just to be a little brighter. And because we're gonna brighten that up a little bit, we'll carry on over toward this one. Just to let it get a little bit lighter that way. Alright. So I don't know. I don't know if you can kind of see how the forest is gonna be in there or not, but trust me when I say there's gonna be. Alright, let's move to the third canvas. And then we'll start working on the wet canvas. The can the this one's not dry over there yet. But that's okay. All right, this time we'll go to the right. Why not? I'm going to do a lot of this with my right hand today because my arm's a little bit re-injured. So I'm trying to let it rest as much as I can. My left arm. So let's just kind of let it rest today. And we'll kind of... This doesn't require a whole lot of extra... Precision. As far as a lot of detail work or anything like that, so you might notice. I don't know if you did notice. We're still using the same paper towel. Now this one, I think I'm going to go like. Maybe again we'll have some sort of a water thing right here. We'll see. All right. Now the next canvas that we're going to do, I'm just setting these off to the side for now. From this point forward, we can we can work against wet. So this is going to be interesting. We've got a black canvas. It's got a it's, the gesso that's on it is white. Uh, no, it's not. It's wet, not white. It's wet. As you can see, it's not white. Oh my gosh. <laughs> So let's start working on this. So this will start to show up. Uh, we'll see how it does while it's still wet. Now, in case you're wondering why, and you can see on the paper towel that it, it is still wet. You might be wondering like, why, why would you work on a wet canvas like that? I, you know, I don't know. I just wanted to try it and see how it looked. I think I want a little bit more white up here on this black though, so let's do it. I want to have a lot of horizon here. Or a lot of trees against the horizon or something like that. Maybe on this one, indication that there's a perhaps on this side there's a little bit of a river coming across this way this is not it this is the bank all right so now we'll discard this one thing and I'm getting plenty of gesso on my hands so it's not that not it's not traumatic all right let's take some black gesso And we'll add it to the white gesso that we have on the plate. Now, the baby wipes will not help you too much with this. With the with that uh, helps really good with, with cleaning oil paint off your hands, but not so much with gesso. Because gesso is acrylic based. This is gesso is acrylic based. All right. Now I've kind of stirred this pile. I'll show it to you here in a second so you can see. Let me spread it out a little bit so you can see it better. I'm not going to really try to stir this up to where it's all blended. So hopefully you can see here. 
that it's kind of a pattern. So I've got the lightest gesso on this side, the darkest gesso on this side, and everything else in between. Let's get another paper towel. And I think before we start doing that, and that pour, I think of that, I think I'll go ahead and put some trees in. So let me grab a good acrylic brush. I have one over here. This one might, this one might work. Alright, so we'll just, we'll just use this one for right now. I got another one too. Yeah, a bigger one? Okay. Yeah, yeah, we can do we can do that with these. Alright, so let's just grab some gray gesso. And let's go back to my right hand. And let's just put you know some trees up in here. It's not bad for a guy painting with the wrong hand. Alright. So I kind of want to do this because I want you guys to see that you don't have to have all this kind of nailed down when you start painting. I mean, I'm painting with the wrong hand for crying out loud. So surely with a little bit of practice, you guys can do this too. I want you to do it. It, once you once you start, it'll be the best thing. You'll say you'll agree this is the best thing that ever happened to you. Re oh, I don't know why I waited my whole life to, to do that. All right, let's put in a couple more. Just Do I have a synthetic script liner in my bag of tricks? I think I might. Yeah. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Okay, so I'm just going to switch to a, to a script liner because I want to make some skinnier trees. Now here, let me go to a, back to the wrong hand again. You notice I'm not, not detailing these out too much. We're just giving some indications back here that there's some trees back there. All right. Now, let's put a couple of some that are just a little bit bigger. Since they're a little bit closer, we're going to make them a little bit darker. Yo. Kind of keep me honest here with this wrong hand thing. All right. Okay, so we got quite a pile of gesso right there. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to I'm going to switch this to the side for a minute while it let it dry, and let's just move to another um, canvas that we can work on. Because that one's got the wet gesso, and then all of the the other gesso is on top of that, so I'm going to do the first one. I believe this is the first one. So let's move on to one of the other three. All right, let's uh, let's start off with a script liner. Oops, let's drop one on the floor and see how that goes for us. Let's start off with a script liner and let's just kind of... So we need to load the script liner. A little better than that, probably. There we go. Because this one's this one's the gesso's drying drying fastly, and that's quick. And that's nice. And we don't have to worry too much about a lot of detail on these trees. And then later on that'll be more. We'll understand more about that in a little while. 
Let's reload this. Put some of the get a little bit darker. We don't really even have to worry too much about I keep trying to change hands. We keep um worry too much about where um where the trees are positioned because as we start to add more of a landscape part in uh it'll it'll be you'll see you'll see we can push trees forward and backward and doing all kinds of things with that so in here later. That's fine. And of course when we get ready to put the oils on we'll, we'll probably add it so even some more trees. So I want to show you this one. I, let me put this last couple little things in here. Let's, let's do something with this tree. Yeah, I like that. Let's do something with this tree. Yeah, I like that too. There we go. Alright, so let me, let me move this up closer so you guys can see. So you can see here these trees are still wet of course, but you can see that most of the trees um, are about on the same, about on the same. They ended about the same spot, right? So, but you can see where they meet the gesso that it, it appears it makes the trees look forward and backward more and more, you know, depending on each one. So, so uh, we're gonna go. I think. I think. Just remember that because when we get to the when we get down, get the rest of the trees on this thing, on these other screens, we will come back, on these other canvases, we will come back to that and start adding some more gray landscape. All right, so I'm just going to wipe the brush off, and then I'm going to go back and pick up some of this darker. I'm just picking up the bottom of that tree. So it only took me that long before my arm started hurting. So I'm using the, rock, the proper hand. So let's let's go back to the to the left. I mean to the right. To the wrong hand for me, but it's okay. It's it's either paint with the wrong hand or don't paint. So I'd rather learn to paint with both hands a little bit better to not pay. Alright. So you might wonder, what happens if you're making this tree, let's say, and you mess it up? So what? So what if you do? I mean, really. Well, it's like, you might say, Ben, you, but, well, but if you did, then it could ruin your whole painting. No, not really. There's no way it could do that. Not in this stage. Not in any stage, actually, but there's there's part of you. There's a part of your inter they call it in my writing career. We called it our internal editor. No, no, don't say that. No, no, don't say that. People might take it the wrong way, or people won't like the way that that's said. Blah 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 blah. Yeah, just you got to turn that editor off because they don't know what they're talking about most of the time. So, especially when you're writing a first draft. Which is actually this is kind of what this is. It's really a first draft. I'm sketching in some, you know, some ideas of some trees. All right, let's go back to the right hand now and put in a couple more trees. Let's put. Let's do something more with this tree. That's, I like that. That's nice. There we go. A nice, I love crooked trees. Oh my gosh, I love crooked trees. The best way to paint them is actually just to paint them with the wrong hand. Because trees don't grow straight. I challenge you to go out to the woods and find a whole bunch of them. 
that are like perfectly, I mean, any tree probably, that's really perfectly straight. Yeah, they don't, they don't exist in nature too much. Especially where I live, when we have sycamores. Sycamores grow every darn direction. All right. Uh, let's put a couple little, I got way too much paint on that script liner. Let me kind of roll it out. I'm going to paint some trees back here. Yeah, that's good. I like that. Your trees don't have to grow all straight up. They can go every which way. That's fine, too. All right. Now, I'm going to wipe this brush out. There's any water over here. I think I do. Oh! From doing my other acrylic work, I have some water still laying on my paint table over there, so that's good. All right, I'm going to pick up some white gesso, bring it to the plate, and I'm just going to pick a little bit of gray. Make it really light gray. I'll see how this looks. And I just want to put a couple of these white trees back here in the back in memory of my sycamores that are growing here in my in Kentucky. Maybe a couple more over here. All right. I think that'll work just fine for that one. So what's that leave us one to do? Well, you know what? I'm going to bring this other one back that we just did a minute ago. And I think since I've got some of this light gray and some of this medium gray, I'm going to kind of stick a few more little trees back up in there. That's a little harder to do right there because only because the gesso is drying. Just on this canvas, this was done like five minutes ago, so it's a little more dry than the one we were just working on. All right, let's go to the last canvas. I have video proof. If Wendy comes down here, for those of you new to my channel, that's my wife, that's my boss lady. She comes down here and sees that I'm painting. She's going to say, what are you doing? Because I'm not supposed to be using my arm. So I have video evidence that I'm using the other arm, so that's good. And you guys are all my witnesses. Very nice. Sometimes you get to make a tree, and it's just so much fun. All right. Let's put a few more. I'll tell you what. Let's take... Let's just wipe that out. Let's, let's wipe this out again real quick. I'm just wiping the acrylic out of it, and I'm just going to pick up some... I don't want to I don't want to taint my white gesso over there. So I'm going to mix it a little bit with this gray. Like a very much lighter gray. I don't have enough of it.
some more of this um, gray gesso and then we'll apply the some of the black gesso. Pick up this paintbrush before it dries. Okay, so we're back to the paper towel. I'm just gonna put a little bit of this on the end of this. All right, and that looks pretty good. All right, now we're just going to kind of some landscape here. Now let's see if I want this to be this one. I just want to make that a little, bit, a little more dabby than what it was. So. right here so this is going to be some water all coming around this way or maybe no 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 no, no. let's don't do that let's do that let's do something a little bit different change my mind let's just round this corner just a little bit like that all right and what we'll have here is a path so let's just pick up that brush where do you go So, and just a touch of gray. So then right here, I want a nice big tree. And then on this side, I'll tell you what, let's do it, let's do another one too. Let's let's have another one like. Let's put one right here. And then let's have another one here. And then let's have another one right. All right, so let's, I'm just load, making sure I got enough acrylic on this brush as I'm pulling it down. Let's have this one kind of be slanted like this. There we go. All right, now we'll take our paper towel, a little bit of gesso. We'll push this one back like about right there. script liner now. And we'll just put a couple of little bit of larger branches on here.
<laughs> Nothing like grabbing a paintbrush by its end. Let's just put that in the water for right now. All right. Because now I got paint all over my hand. All right. But if I didn't have it, would, it just wouldn't be me, would it? I like that one a lot, just like it isn't. So I'm going to let this dry overnight. And then tomorrow, we'll come back and we'll start finishing these. It won't. We're doing most of the difficult work right now, so it's not all really that hard to finish these up when we're done. But they'll look pretty snazzy. And I hope I hope you guys will paint. I hope you guys will paint these kind of things. I hope you really like it, and you know you'll kind of do some things with it. All right, so I'm just looking to see if there's any touch-ups I want to do. This tree. I'm going to bring this tree back forward again. And then this tree, I think, can also come forward a little bit more. I'm going to make its trunk a little wider. I'm just doing all this with the script liner. I want to pick up some of that gray, which I'm doing pretty well right there. All right. Okay, let's go to the next one. So this one basically for the under part is done. All right? For the underpainting. Fairly simple, fairly straightforward to how we're doing it. It's a lot of paint on there right now. So, you know, we gotta we gotta let it go. Gotta let it go coalesce a little bit. Alright, so I now I want to put some bigger trees on this one. So we're gonna get this brush and clean it out. Well, there I could do it all with a script liner, but I'm not going to. I could do it with a script liner. You could do it all with a script liner as well. However, whatever brush suits you. All right, in this case, I'm going to have a nice big tree like right along in here. Like that. Let's make the base a little bit wider. There we go. Yeah, I kind of like that. And of course, we'll add some branches to it. Let's add another tree. Like, let's see. What are we doing here? Oh, yeah, we're going to have like. Here's what I see. Coming through the woods here, you know, there's going to be a small path coming through, like right along in here. Going behind this tree and off that way. Maybe. Let's put another big tree right here, and another big tree right here. here. All right, so we'll set that aside. Put the brush back in the water for now. We'll pick up the script liner and the gesso. Again, using the wrong hand. Let's put some branches on here. Now, if you're making script lines, if you're using the script liner and you're having problems making these fine lines, um, Probably the issue is your paint is either not thin enough 
which this is not really all that thin, but but the thing is is to paint with the tip of the brush, and as you're painting with it, turn it in your fingers like this. And that allows the paint to continue to flow right out of the brush, and it'll give you a nice sharp edge coming off of that. So So if that's going to come across here, let's have a branch that kind of comes off the string. Okay, so this tree and this tree in this tree. Uh, I'm just going to wash my brush out and I'm going to address these back trees using some gray gesso. I want to add a couple of little extra branches that are complementary to this branch. Yeah, it could probably be a little bit darker, but it's okay. All right, tell you what, let's do this. How's that? Yeah, it's nice and dark. Okay. Um, this tree could use a couple extra branches. These these are just branches that are they're not even really going to show up in the main painting probably, but I'll know they're back there. Okay. All right. Let's so clean this brush. Go back to dark. Pew. All right. This tree is a little too skinny. Let's make it a little bit wider. And we can do this with a script liner, just like I was saying earlier. I don't have to get too rambunctious with this, but you can use a script liner just to lay that tree in there, create some shadow. All right, let's add some branches to it. A nice big branch, like right here. So I'm kind of bearing down on that, and now I'm moving it out toward the tip, just like that. There we go. Now, you might not make your trees this way, and that's okay. Make your trees however you want. It's your, it's your world. Do what you want to do. It's your painting. Let me tell you different. You may not want all these, all these branches and stuff in here. So now I'm going to add a little bit of darkness to this tree because it's going to kind of be in the shadows. Let's see him about this little guy right here. Yeah, I like that. Now this tree, eh, it doesn't matter. I could I could piddle with these trees all day. I could probably have a lot of fun doing it too. All right. So I fill the script liner up full to make this tree bigger. Now, let me clean this up before I go to the next painting. Before I go to the next painting, though, I want to put a little bit of additional landscape into this tree. So what I'm going to do, I'll take this, I kind of fold it. This is the one I just used to wipe off the thing. I'm going to pick up a little bit of this gray gesso. I'm just going to kind of 
put some landscape around these trees a little bit. Like that. Okay, now I want to kind of give myself a hint as to what I was thinking when I painted this theory. So I'm thinking like maybe like there's a path that comes through like and then maybe it goes off behind this tree like that. Yeah, that'll work. And then we'll have a body of water right here. So we'll kind of put a rock or something right there. Let's just kind of we kind of cut this off a little bit. Having some black water lines. There we go. So a little bit of gray. A little bit of gray thrown into that. And it's more than I wanted, but that's okay. We'll use that. We'll add a little bit of reflections to that later. Okay. All right. That'd be fine. All right. We'll pick up some dark and kind of put some stuff around there. Okay, all right, so let's top off our tree right here. What do I do with that script liner? I would just use the script liner, but I don't have it, so let's just, I'm just going to kind of fix where I put that landscape in there. The thing about acrylics, just paint over the top. All right, let's go to the next one. Oh, I shouldn't hold, I should hold it up so you can see it. Here we go. All right, so I think that's two of the four. Yep. So here's the next one. All right, so this is just going to have a path or a river. Maybe it'll just have a river. So if we do that, let me do it with my script liner. Oh, here it is. All right, so if we do that, if we have a script liner, I mean, if we have a script liner, oh my gracious. All right, so if we're gonna have like the water come through right here, right, then we should have a, like a little path to come come across in this way. So let's kind of think about that for a second. So like right here will be a path. And it'll go off into the distance, go off into the distance like that. And then the water will kind of come across this way. So let's just kind of add some black in here. Just to kind of give us a little idea of what this is going to be. Because, you know, by the time it gets here, by the time I do it in a couple days, I, I might forget. If I do it tomorrow, it probably won't be. Put some water all the way up in here like that little turn. Maybe we'll pay to put a little boat dock or something in there. And then down this way, down this way, we want to have like a little bit of water coming down. Let's see where we want it to be. Let's have it come down through right here. And then right here we'll have like a waterfall. Okay. So that gives us a little bit of a hint about a tree work that we have to do. We don't have to stick to that, but we will we'll kind of work around that. All right, so let's get some of these, let's put some of these gray trees in front of the water, like that. Let's have another one. Let's have this tree. 
This tree will go behind it. And we'll pick up this tree right here. And it will come in front of it. Like a cross like that. But maybe grow crooked. Let's have a nice big crooked tree right here. Yeah, like that. Painting with the wrong hand, Benjamin. Don't get in trouble with the boss lady. All right. Okay, just for a second. We'll switch back now. All right. So now we're. Yeah, I like that. That's a nice looking tree. It's got some personality. All right. Let's put another one back here. And then let's put another one like right. Let's not do it with that hand. Let's, let's use this tree. So we'll just paint over this tree. Script liner. Make it all curly and freaky looking. There we go. All right. Let's paint this other side. There we go. All right. Then I want another tree, say, right here by the water. Okay, I pulled the script liner off a little too fast that time. I pulled it back too fast. There we go. All right, now. I love painting trees. You can't paint them wrong, really. I mean, you can, Maybe, you know, make it like, oh, I'm not satisfied with that. The branches are too thick or they look too funky or whatever. But really, I mean, you can't really mess them up because they grow, they grow wild. And so they go whichever way they want to go. They're not quite as free as painting clouds, but they're pretty close. All right, so right here, like right here. This tree, there's nothing wrong with this tree. I just want to make it a little wider right there and then bring it on down so that I kind of showing like back in the day, the tree was growing along here and then suddenly, you know, it had a bad year and then, you know, so it got skinny and then the next year it was like, oh, well, let's go and it was ready to rock and roll again. All right. So let's put another big tree right back here. This one's not quite so big, but it's nice and twisty. Like nice and squiggly. There we go. Yeah. Yeah, like that. That's nice. Now, I hope you can see that when we start to work on all of this, um, this, all this background is all going to show through, so it's, it's going to be cool, right? It's going to be super cool. Even here, like this, these trees, this stuff that we've already put in, this is the way they're painted right now. They're right, like this guy's like right up on the bank, and the water's running behind it, you know. But you can actually see, you can actually see where it's meeting right up with the landscape. All right, now, in my particular instance, I dropped in one of my little caps, didn't I? I felt they fall, but I don't see it. All right, that's okay. All right, so on this side, though, I don't have any trees. So that's not going to work. All right, so let's make a, another big tree. Can't paint all that with a script liner because it's a really big tree. This is a really big tree. I guess I could paint it all with a script liner, so let me show you how to do it faster this way. All right.
Why am I putting that in the chisel container? All right. Now let's just finish this out with a little bit of script lining. And I, I think that'll that'll be okay for that. So there we go. Got a lot going on in that. Now, in black and white, these paintings look kind of spooky, but they're not. That's not gonna. They're gonna be. They're gonna be kind of. They're gonna be all kind of sunbeamy when we get done, but in different colors. In different colors of sunbeamy. All right. So I'm gonna wash this brush out just for a second. Pick up some gray gesso, and let's just do, put, do a little bit of back backline script lining on these trees. I just want to add a few extra ditties. And you know, you don't have to do these. You don't. I'm just kind of throwing them in there because. They will show through later in the in the painting. Maybe they might. I don't know if they will or not. Depends depends where my brush lands when I'm painting. But the brush. This one here, what did I decide I want to do with this? Oh, I think I was just going to have like a, have all of this, have some trees like across here and then just have it, some water here, or maybe some rocks. I'm not sure. We'll figure it out. All right, let's put some trees in first though. So let's put one, let's put one right here. So I want this dark. I want these dark trees to be really twisty, or not really twisty, but you know, twisty. All right, now the base of this tree is pretty much defining that it's, it's not going to be in the water right there. So if the water comes around this way, we're going to have to, put, we're going to, have to add a little bit of landscape around that way. So, or we can cut the tree off. Six and one, half a dozen of the other. All right, let's put another one right here. Let's put one up to like this far. Okay, I'm not getting there with that. Let's try it again. Need more paint. Can't paint without paint. There we go. Now, in splitting trees, when I first started having split trees, I tended to draw as I was sketching the tree, I would come up this side, say for instance, and then I would go out this way with the brush. I have found that it works better for me if I come up this way and then go out that way with the brush. It something about crossing over the tree, it, it just works better for me. So now this tree is a little too stumpy. Let's make it a little bit like that. A little too skinny right there. Let's make it a little bit like that. And we can have like a maybe a broken branch like that. All right, one more tree. Let's put this one right here. All 
All right, there's the twisty tree I was looking for. I knew the twisty tree lived in this forest. All right. Now you can add other things to this. You could add rocks or whatever to the underpainting, whatever you want to add to it. Doesn't really matter. Just depends on what you want to put in there. So I think that's all four of them. Now I'm gonna let these dry overnight. Now you don't have to, you can take a hair dryer and dry them with that. Um, that works just fine. Um, make it done faster. I use a heat gun. Um, if you use a heat gun, just be careful because you get the gun too hot and you'll boil the paint, especially acrylics. So, last hint here, black gesso lid. It's got a sandwich bag over the top, over the bottom of it. I'm going to use that to close this back up. And that will keep my threads from getting bound up by dried gesso that might be on the side. Same thing on the white one. There's wet gesso in the threads. For me tapping my brush on the sides, so you just put plastic lid over that and screw it down tight. It'll stay nice and dry and it won't bind up your thing. Okay, so um, part two of this video will be about uh, painting these four paintings and hopefully we'll get them up tomorrow and we can get them up to you guys. So I hope you guys are having a great weekend and we'll see you next time. See you on the next part.